So the big thing about Disney Sea is you got to get there real early before it opens. So you got to leave if you're in Shibuya like us. You gotta leave at 6 a.m. It takes about an hour to get there. So let's go. It's unusual to see Shibuya so empty in the morning, but everyone is on their way to work and just a little sleepy. We've arrived at Tokyo Disney Sea. Here we are, waiting in line, and let's go check this out in 40 minutes or so. Ideally, you want to arrive at least an hour before the park opens. Hotel guests get to enter 15 minutes early, but there are still lots of people behind us. Once you're through the turnstiles, make a beeline, walking, not running, to the Tower of Terror to get fast passes. Toy Story Mania is actually the most popular ride here, but we're gonna skip it as it's the same as the North American version. Just got fast pass tickets to Tower of Terror. Now we're gonna go try to get on to the descent of the earth. Let's go. Every second counts here, so make your way quickly to Journey of the Center of the Earth below the volcano, which is unique to Tokyo Disney Sea and also probably the best ride here. It's only a five minute wait. Within the hour, the wait times will climb to 70 minutes. It has such cool theming on the queue line for the Jules Verne inspired ride. Jules Verne inspired theming of this world is fantastic. Now we're headed to 20,000 leagues under the sea, which should have no wait time. thing to head to is the Indiana Jones ride, though today it was broken down so we headed back to the Tower of Terror to redeem our fast passes. One unique thing about the Tokyo Disneyland and Disney Sea is you'll see a lot of guests dressed up in cosplay, and often in groups dressed up as the same thing. Also Duffy the Disney Bear is unique here and very very popular. As the story goes, Minnie Mouse hand sewed Duffy for Mickey Mouse as he was packing for a long voyage at sea and gave it to him in a duffel bag, hence the name, Duffy. With the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror closed, this is definitely worth a visit, as the story is different from any other version. Tower of Terror done, and then now we're trying to get lottery tickets. Now we're trying to get lottery tickets to Big Bang Beats, which is right here. The show's a jazz musical, and only based on lottery can people get tickets, so it's good to go early on and try your luck. Yay! We won tickets! We won tickets! As there's not much vegetarian food available at Disney Sea, we made sure to make reservations at the restaurant di Canaletto. So we got reservations for the restaurant, and now we're going to get more fast pass tickets to go see the journey to the Santa Rea for one more time. The 
The Indiana Jones ride was working again, so we headed there, which has one of the best queues I've ever seen, much better than the Disneyland version. You'll want to ride this by using Single Rider, which uses the same Fastpass track, but you just tell the attendants, I want to ride Single Rider, and they let you into your own line, which basically allows you to just walk on, as it is unused by any of the Japanese guests. Raging Spirits is next door, which is a re-theme of the Indiana Jones ride from Disneyland Paris. It has a 360 degree loop and also takes the single rider line. We already rode it last year and I can't do loop-to-loop -loop rides, we decided to skip it. And head on to Sinbad's Storybook Voyage, located in the Arabian coast, Port of Call. The dark ride is a cross between Pirates of the Caribbean and It's a Small World. It has a fantastic song composed by Alan Menken called Compass of Your Heart. The ride takes you through Sinbad's adventures as he leaves home to set sail on the Seven Seas. There he encounters pirates, giant birds, and a giant genie that he sets free. As well as some mysteriously musical monkeys. There was an original version called Sinbad's Seven Voyages that opened to guests on September 4th of 2001. However, it was a lot darker and became unpopular, so it was retooled and reopened with a lighter mood in 2007. There are a lot of character meeting spots around the park. One thing that stood out is that there was no need to regulate the crowds as everyone just stood around the characters patiently waiting for their turn. We then headed to Mermaid Lagoon Port of Call, which is mostly indoors and recreates the feeling of being underwater, as well as being a great place to hide from the sweltering heat in the summertime. Most of these rides are geared towards younger children, however. There's a great little show called King Triton's Concert that involves Ariel, Sebastian, and Flounder swimming above the audience while singing classic Little Mermaid songs in Japanese. After that, we caught the end of the Villains World Harbor Show that showcases all the Disney villains, as well as some impressive water stunts. After the show, it was time for lunch, so we headed to Restaurante de Canaletto. We were greeted to some amazing seats overlooking the canals. We had some spaghetti carbonara and veggie pizza while watching the gondolas sail by. Got a few more fast passes and then checked out the happiest celebration on the sea show, which wasn't as good as the villain show, but ended with some spectacular fireworks. Since all the important rides had been done, we had time to relax and enjoy the park and take some photos. We rewrote some of the rides and then headed to the Teddy Roosevelt Lounge in the SS Columbia for some snacks. After that, we headed to Big Bang Beats, the musical show sung by Mickey in a jazz band. To be honest, it wasn't that great and I kind of fell asleep, but that's because we woke up at 5 a.m. We took one last ride on the Tower of Terror then prepare to get seats to see the evening show A Brand New Dream.
Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment down below on what your favorite Disney ride is. See you in the next one.